All right, my loves, welcome to day two, this, well, actually day three of School of Seduction um, and the second training that we have out of three. So I'm really excited for tonight. I'd love to know what are you getting so far out of the week? What has been shifting for you? Um, what ahas do you have? How have you been really digging into being a seductress and what do you want to get out of tonight? So let's go ahead, put that in the chat box and let me know. So on the first training, we talked about mindset, we talked about the shadow and the stories going on in our subconscious that are potentially blocking us from truly activating and being a seductress in our own life. And we really began to talk about the redefining of what it means to be a seductress, how when... <sighs> When we look back to what a seductress was hundreds of years ago, and really in the last 3,000, 3,500 years, there are women, there are archetypes, there are um, even professions, right, that were really um, heavily dependent on this idea of being a seductress, right? Even if we think back to, again, I love history. So I'm constantly watching like documentaries and historical fiction and stuff. And so in watching Bridgerton, right? Um, I'm sure some of you have seen it. Maybe you haven't. Love it or hate it. Just bear with me. Um, you know, the one brother, his love interest in the show was an opera singer. And so she was a woman who in a way was of like a lower class. She, um, you know, was kind of on her own. And there's this element of she's, you know, seductive, right? And so, so often we see the energy of or the archetype of a seductress being coupled with danger, being coupled with wrongness, being coupled with like immorality, being coupled with sometimes manipulation. And the reality is, first of all, nothing about seduction is immoral. And that's something I'm going to address at the beginning of this call, because I know for a lot of us who either you were raised religious, you may or may not still be religious, and maybe you weren't even raised religious, but we have to really look at and address the fact that a woman's sexuality in Judeo-Christian religion is really demonized. And because Judeo-Christian religion, right, so it has been such a cornerstone of power, politics, policy for the last 3,000 years, definitely for the last 2,000, 2,500 years, because that has been like the guiding moral code, it is so deeply embedded in our subconscious that a woman's sexuality is somehow deeply immoral. Somehow it's so deeply wrong. And, you know, I went to Catholic school for 10 years. I am not religious at this point. Like I don't practice an organized religion. I consider myself very, very spiritual. And one of the toughest things for me in terms of my own business, in terms of my marketing, in terms of really owning and claiming this lane, if you will, for myself in the world has been coming up against the internalized patriarchal Christian a slash Catholicism um, beliefs around a woman's sexuality and being moral, right? And so this is where the Madonna whore paradigm is born. So the Madonna whore paradigm is that a woman can either be good and virginal or bad and a whore, right? Like you can't be good 
and own your sexuality. You can't be bad and like be a virgin, right? Like if you were a virgin and if you were disconnected from your sexuality, if you went along with what men wanted, if you basically had no voice, no desires, no needs, then you were good, right? And this really breeds the self-sacrificing, martyr, codependent, um, identity and, um, identity and tendencies that I believe most women have. And we have them not because we're bad, not because we're broken, but because this is how culture and society has told us to act. This is how culture and society has told us to be good. This is how culture and society said we would be rewarded. And what I find for so many women in my community is you are inherently naturally a helper healer. So either you're a coach, you're a healer, healer, you're, um, you know, maybe you're a therapist, maybe you are, you work in corporate, but you still kind of identify with this idea of being a helper healer. Like you're always the one that people come to for advice that people lean on, that people emotionally need support from, whether that be because you truly want to give it or because you are just that person that constantly overgives and over functions, right? And so I find for that identity, the helper healer, right? You grew up in a home where you had to very quickly grow up for a variety of reasons. And you had to parent your parents, either emotionally, physically, um, it could be energetically. Again, a lot of people in my community are very energetically sensitive. And so what ends up happening is you develop the belief and the identity that in order for me to be safe in the world, I have to take care of others. In order for me to be loved, I have to prove that I'm worthy through what I do for the other person. In order for me to belong, to have a connection, to not be abandoned, I have to overgive. Because if I overgive, then I'm needed and I won't be abandoned. Let that sink in for a moment. So you overfunction, you overdo and you overgive in relationships, especially romantic ones, right? And so for that identity, we have to, and that to me ends up being so deeply tied to being like a good girl, being a perfectionist, being an overachiever. And again, all of this is really what and who I was what beliefs and identity pieces still come up for me. And so this idea that if I overgive, if I overfunction, if I overdo for people, I will secure safety in the world. That coupled with the cultural and societal belief that a woman's sexuality is dirty, wrong, and dangerous leads most women to being numb, shut down and disconnected from their bodies. And then in order to really secure safety and love, you fall back into these martyr, self-sacrificing, over-functioning tendencies. And again, it's not because you're wrong or you're broken, quite, quite the opposite. You at a very young age realized that that was a way to secure safety. And so you just have been doing it unconsciously now and culture and society have reinforced that as being good and moral, right? So I find for a lot of women, even if you weren't raised religious, but especially if you were raised religious or if you had heavy religious conditioning, maybe you didn't go to church, but your parents or family members or caretakers um, really had like a strong affinity for some kind of religious conditioning. 
the idea of being a seductress feels very unsafe and it brings up this feeling of being immoral and being bad. And again, this is one of the biggest pieces I myself have had to confront in doing this work so publicly in the world. You know, there were times where when I was doing my own inner work, my own journaling, it was like, oh, I don't deserve to have people join my program because this work isn't okay. This work is immoral, right? And I had to like locate my inner little Catholic school nun and make her feel safe and make her realize that the truth, the actual like universal spiritual truth is that your body is sacred. Your sexuality is sacred, right? So I said on the training, the first training, the way the patriarchy has really um, controlled us, controlled women, oppressed women, suppressed women is from at the onslaught, (laughs) taking the feminine out of the divine. So making the monotheistic, um, deity, a male, and taking the divine out of the body. So to me, when you join Seductress, my four-month program, the one of the ways that you deeply begin to reconnect to and activate your feminine power is to bring spirituality back into it. And again, this isn't a, I'm not religious, so this isn't about a religious conditioning. I have tons of clients who are religious and do this work, but it's about coming back to the truth that you are already whole and perfect, that your body is divine, that your sexuality is beautiful. And if you truly believe that you, that God, universe, source, whatever created you, that they make no mistakes, then it's about just really rewiring that story that you are, you're perfect. And because you are already perfect and because you are already worthy, so too is your body and your sexuality. Now, that brings up a lot of shadow, a lot of shame, a lot of guilt. And we work through all of that inside the program, right? That's why I said on day one, and why I've been giving so many incredible bonuses for you this week, is one week is great. And conceptually, like you'll shift some beliefs, maybe you will like leave feeling energized. You'll be like, oh my God, Lauren's such a genius. Like there are these things I've never thought about before. And then come Monday, like most of it's going to be gone, right? Most of what is activated for you, if you do not sign up for seductress, is going to be lost. And it's going to be lost because the entire world all of the patriarchal systems and all of the hierarchies are created to keep you disconnected from your power. And if you are not plugged into a container where you are actively plugging back into your power, it is impossible to do it on your own. It's impossible to do it on your own because the deep conditioning, the shadow, the subconscious beliefs, the shame, the immorality, these parts of ourselves, the fear, the the scared inner child who thinks that if you fully own your power in the world, you'll no longer be safe. It is this deep and profound healing in, in within your body, in your nervous system, in your subconscious mind that creates the total shift, right? And really allows you to show up in your full power. So again, whatever is coming up for you in terms of religious conditioning, in terms of fear, in terms of shame, all of it is normal, which is exactly why you need to be inside of Seductress, right? And so today we're going to dive into emotional mastery and sensuality. And the reason why I put these two together today is because once you realize that the stories that are going on in your mind your subconscious, and really even your nervous system are controlling the show. 
you begin to realize that one of the reasons why you are so numb, so shut down, so disconnected is because of stuck, stagnant, and unhealed and unprocessed pain, wounding, and trauma. Trauma with a big T and trauma with a little T, right? So we've talked about um, I've talked about this plenty of times. There's overt trauma. I think I talked about it on the first call too. Overt trauma and covert trauma. That's what I call them. Big T, little T, however you want to categorize it. To me, trauma is trauma, right? So trauma is something that happens to you that you interpret as unsafe and causes your nervous system to go into a stress response, fight flight, freeze, fawn, right? And we are the only animals that don't actively complete the stress cycle once we're in it. So for example, if a deer is, you know, coming across a road and a car hits it and it doesn't, um, What's word that I'm looking for? Fatally hurt the hurt it, but its system obviously experiences a trauma. What it does once it's in a safe space, so it's crossed the road, it's fine, it's not going to die. It shakes, and it completes the stress cycle, or it runs and completes the stress cycle. Humans are the only animals that don't complete the stress cycle upon experiencing it, right? So when I categorize things as like overt trauma or big T trauma, covert trauma and little t trauma, what I mean is I want you to really realize that there are a lot of things that have happened to you in your life that your nervous system, that your body, that your subconscious mind interpreted as traumatic that if I were to ask you, oh, have you ever experienced trauma? You wouldn't categorize it as that. So slut shaming or shaming around your body is a huge one for women. So I remember, for example, um, one time I must have been like 13-ish, maybe 12. I developed very early and I remember coming downstairs in like a tighter top and, and I was already uncomfortable in my body and everything. And my mom <laughs> looks at me and goes, wow, don't you look like a hussy? Everything in my system shut down, right? I froze and that was traumatic, right? So I received the message, this is not okay. This is probably unsafe. Um, this will make me judge, shamed, criticized. I could potentially lose love for this, right? So when you realize that your nervous system, the cells of your body hold on to the emotions, to the pain, to the trauma, when you don't complete the stress cycle or when you don't have regular somatic practices, then it makes sense why most women are living from their neck up. Right, if I were to tell you right now to fully drop into your body, fully connect to pussy, could you do it? And if you can, how long can you maintain it? Right? The reason why the majority of women in this world feel unsafe and not at home in your body is simply because of unhealed pain, trauma, and wounding. So inside Seductress, I teach you my emotional mastery practices, but I'm going to give you one right here and right now. Yesterday, your homework assignment was to do dance breaks, right? So dance breaks are incredible because they activate your body. They turn your body on. You begin to release oxytocin, which is that feel good hormone. And so I encourage all of my clients, all of the women who take my programs to do regular dance breaks in your lives, right? So you can set a timer on your phone. You can be the one who, you know, like every hour does a dance break, especially if you're home and working from home. And um, so dance breaks are amazing, but another way that you can utilize dance or move and or movement is to find songs that elicit emotion, 
heavier emotions. Now, I don't call them dark emotions because I think that that gives them this connotation, but emotions that feel heavier in your body, sadness, grief, um, disappointment, frustration, anger, rage, right? In order for you to be a seductress, in order for you to be magnetic in your life, in order for you to be anything that you see in me, any of the reasons why you're following me, you have to be able to experience your entire emotional range. Now, this is something that is really novel for a lot of women. And it was for me when I first started doing this work, right? We tend to live in this like really small range of like disappointment to content, right? We're not even really allowed to go into full-blown joy or full-blown bliss. And we're definitely not allowed to go into despair or grief. So when you live in this way, right, what ends up happening is you basically are just like living here up, right? And then if you like get too close to content, then you like start freaking out and overanalyzing and overthinking and come back down to being disappointed or whatever. And so the more that you can experience your full emotional range and find it right and be able to hold and witness yourself in it, the more emotionally free, emotionally liberated, and empowered you are in all areas of your life. So putting on a song that really elicits a heavier emotion, anger, frustration, rage, and dancing it out, allowing your body, giving your body permission to do what it knows how to do and to move the emotions through your body. Emotions are just energy in motion, but what we do is we stop the motion, we stifle them, they get locked in our body and in our nervous system, then we wonder why we feel like shit all the time, why we're numb, why we're disconnected, why we're numb, actively numbing out with TV, alcohol, sugar, um, drugs, cigarettes, social media, when you learn emotional mastery, you then also really improve your confidence because one of the biggest killers for women is this fear of like, well, what if something goes wrong or what if I can't handle it? Or what if I'm also, what if I become successful? Then what? Like, will I be loved? Will I be safe? When you create a sense of emotional mastery in your life, you have this deep and unwavering knowledge that you can handle anything life throws at you. And therefore you become more confident and more willing to actually follow your desires. Okay. So that's the first thing. Emotional mastery is key. And once you begin to liberate these emotions, move them up and out of your body, it becomes so much easier to incorporate sensuality in your life, right? So sensuality is just living life with all of your senses engaged. So with all of your senses engaged, what happens is it puts you into your body and into the present moment. So one of my favorite things, one of my favorite questions for myself and for my clients is what would make this experience more pleasurable? So maybe it's lighting a candle, maybe it is turning some music on, maybe it's adding cinnamon to your coffee. Pleasure and sensuality are one in the same. You can't have pleasure and not feel it, right? You can't have pleasure like mentally. I mean, you can, you can think of something that's pleasurable, but what happens is you feel it. You feel it emotionally. You feel it in your body. You feel the excitement, maybe the goosebumps, the little bit of that turn on, right? So pleasure doesn't happen in the, in your mind, it happens in your body. So you want to live a more pleasurable life. You want to experience more pleasure. You want to feel more pleasure in bed. You have to be able to feel your body, which means you have to move the emotions through them, right? Through it. So living centrally is the core principle for a seductress. So I mentioned this on the first call. To me, seduction is the intersection of desires, sensuality, surrender, and power, right? 
when you are in that like sacred spot in yourself, you have your desires, you know what you want, you know you're already worthy of them, you're turned on, you're fucking alive, you're allowing yourself to feel pleasure, you're surrendered, meaning you're detached from the timeline and from how it happens. And you're so deeply connected to your power. You are so deeply sure that you as a woman are the most potent force on the planet. Whew. Think of what is possible in your life. If you were to live from that space that I just described, what would be possible for you in your life? Tell me. And go ahead and post it in the comments. And I'll continue talking about sensuality. So again, sensuality is just experiencing the world, experiencing life through all five of your senses or however many senses you have. Sight, sound, taste, touch. Sight, sound, taste, to, oh, and hearing. And touch to me means what's on your body and then your emotions as well. Okay. And so sensuality is the foundational principle of a seductress, because when, when you think of a seductress, like when you think of famous seductresses like Cleopatra and, um, I don't know, tell me some other seductresses that you think of or imagine when you think of a seductress, I think of different like courtesans. I think of, um, think who else who else is a seductress um Cleopatra is like one of the big the ones that comes to mind but whenever you think of a seductress she's in her body she has no problem like she, how she moves her hips Mae West and Marilyn Monroe totally thank you um they're in their bodies right they occupy their entire body and they feel safe and at home in it, okay? So the way that you begin to feel safe and at home in your body is through emotional mastery, allowing yourself to liberate the emotions that are stuck in your body. And then it's really focusing on sensuality and pleasure, which are really one and the same, okay? So as you begin to allow yourself to experience more sensuality, experience more pleasure in your life, and you are deeply and utterly connected to pussy. So to me, this is the point of being a seductress. If you are living in your head, if you're disconnected from your body, if you're numbed out, you're disconnected from pussy. If you are connected to pussy, you are fully inhabiting all that is you, okay? So for those of you who are new to me, or maybe you just need to hear this again, I use the word pussy for a variety of reasons. So first and foremost, I really encourage you that if you're in my community to not use the word vagina. And the reason why is it's anatomically correct. It's anatomically incorrect when you are talking about your vulva or your clitoris. And therefore it's disempowering. It would be like calling your elbow your hand. Doesn't make sense. So your vagina is your vaginal canal. It's from the opening at your vulva to your cervix, right? That's your vagina, that's it. But we've, it's become so like culturally appropriate to call your vulva, which is the outer genitals, your outer labia, your inner labia, your clitoris, to call that your vagina. And that's not accurate, right? So if you're in my community, you don't necessarily have to use the word pussy, although I would say try it on for size. See what comes up for you. But do not use the word vagina. Begin to really look at what would it be like for you to accurately name your body? What would it be like for you to have a connection to the most potent and powerful part of you 
that is labeled correctly, right? So you can use the word vulva, you can use whatever word really you want to use. I use pussy because, well, the, the, it's how I started doing this work, right? I was meant, I started um, in Mama Gina's School of Womanly Arts. She's like the OG of sensuality work almost 10 years ago at this point. It's been eight years. And she uses the word pussy and she uses the word pussy because um, she says, and, and I wholeheartedly believe with it, believe this, but also really like to cite it. We as women, we don't have a word that really unifies us in labeling our genitals. And so also pussy is used in culture as something that's like degrading. It's a degrading word. Like men will call other men pussies. Like that's supposed to mean weak or insignificant. When in reality, a pussy, a female's pussy has the ability to bring life into the world, which is the most miraculous and like strength requiring feat, right? Not to mention it can expand to allow a baby to come into the world. Like that shit's not weak. It's super fucking strong, right? We bleed every month without dying. Like the ancient civilizations used to honor that element of woman. We've lost that. So I use the word pussy. And when I use pussy, I'm really referring to my vulva, to my clitoris. And then also to just all of my feminine reproductive organs and the power in which you can cultivate from that. So your my womb, my ovaries, my cervix, like there is so much potent energetic power within our bodies as women that we are so disconnected from. And so, you know, they, it is said, it, there's a book called Woman, An Intimate Landscape. And in there, she talks about how your clitoris is actually your third brain. So we have our brain, we have our gut. People talk about their instincts or gut instincts. And your clitoris is your third brain. It is like constantly taking in information and sending it up through the vagus nerve. And so when you repair the relationship that you have with your own pussy, you can tune, she will tell you what she wants. She will tell you if it's a yes or a no. And so what I want you to do right now is to go ahead and close your eyes. You can put your hands on your pussy if you want. You can not, if that's uncomfortable for you. And what I want you to do is just begin to do very slow hip circles. So slow. And as you move your body, see if you can feel pleasure, but more importantly, make sure that your focus, your attention is on your pussy, on your vulva, your womb, your clitoris, bring all of your energy there. So now on this next hip circle, I want you to focus on your pussy and tell her that you love her. Again, you can have your hands there if you want. I want you to thank her for her brilliance. I want you to tell her you're sorry that you haven't listened to her fully. You've been cut off. You can keep doing hip circles. You can stop if you want and just send love to her and notice a difference. Like I am getting actively turned on, physically turned on. I'm feeling more alive. I'm feeling happier. And if you don't feel any difference, if you aren't connected, that's okay. It's just feedback. It's just information. It doesn't mean anything about you. Just keep going, sending love. Great. 
So now what I want you to do is go ahead and pop in the chat box, what shifted for you? How did that, like what happened for you there? And if you're watching the replay, make sure to go ahead and post inside the Facebook group because we want to hear, right? I was thinking about how, you know, I had one of my very best friends who she and I did our sexuality certification program together. She messages me the other day and she's like, Lauren, you know, I'm so grateful for you. I'm so grateful to have a woman in my life who is so deeply connected to pussy, who so embodies this work and who I can tell anything to, right? So when you step into your seductress, one of the things that's required in my program, one of the, the core threads is unconditional love and acceptance for all parts of yourself. Unconditional love and acceptance for all of your emotions. Unconditional love and acceptance for your body. And there's so much power in that in a world, in a culture, in a society that constantly tries to show us how we are wrong just for being women. And so being in a community of other women who are cultivating that sense of unconditional love and acceptance for themselves creates a non-judgmental space for you to come to bring your shit to and to be met with love and acceptance and then vice versa because you're cultivating so much unconditional love and acceptance for yourself you are able to meet the other women in the community and hold them in that unconditional love and acceptance. And that's what I mean when I say that you cannot heal your feminine in isolation. It has to be done in community because that reflection of each other, that holding of each other is vital. And so Anyways, yesterday I'm, I'm talking to one of my best friends and she's like, you know, Lauren, there are very few women in my life that I can, um, that I have the relationship I have with you. And I'm going to be honest with you. Okay, this is not where I thought I was going. And I, I think I'm going to cry a little bit. I spend so much of my life feeling so alone and so um, other especially with other women. And I know this is a really common story for us as women. It's a really common story for all of the women in my community, right? Like you're empathic and sensitive and you probably like give way too much to the people in your life. And you may or may not have, a have had a story about not being enough or being too much. Mine was being afraid of being too much. So then shrinking down and then like still being worried that this shrunk down version of myself was not enough, right? And, you know, today, the city that I live in, I don't really have a lot of friends here locally. I have a lot of friends and a lot of my network is, is global. And I was just really thinking today about what would the world be like if every woman or the majority of women were so deeply connected to pussy that we were able to have such depth of sisterhood with other women? Now, does that mean you need to be friends with everybody? No, right? But like, imagine what that would be like. And so, I say all of that to say that over this week, things are going to come up for you. Fears are going to come up, shame, shadow stuff. And I want you to know that when you join Seductress, this is a safe container for you to bring all of that to. So I've already processed through so much of this shit myself. And because you are actively cultivating unconditional love and unconditional for your fem acceptance for your feminine, and so are the other women in this program. You guys get to meet each other in that and you get to create depths of friendship that 
you may, but probably don't have anywhere else in your life. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I'm doing seductress in a group style. Like, yes, I could just sell this as one-on-one or have it be like a very, very high-end mastermind. And I've done that in the past, but the truth is like, this needs to be a global movement and you're here because you want to be part of it. And so it's your time. It's your time to join seductress. Now, as you know, we have tons of bonuses. Um, Oh, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate that. We're just finishing up. So, um, you know, you can watch the end of this whenever you want. You'll get the replay in the email. But um, we have tons of bonuses for this week for School of Seduction. We have the um, early bird pricing. And so today, when you sign up from now until 5 p.m. tomorrow, you get the additional training and Q&A call with me, you get Sexy Jade Boot Bootcamp and you get my Blow Him Away course. So you get tons of incredible bonuses. Um, early bird pricing goes through Monday. And, you know, I think, well, one, I don't plan on running this program again in 2021. And the next time I run it, the price will undoubtedly be higher. So those are two really important things to know. And I think the reality is what I want to impress upon you, ladies who are watching, is that nothing is going to change until you begin to say yes to yourself. And I think we have begot, we have gotten so comfortable delaying our desires, saying no to ourselves, talking ourselves out of what we want, putting others first being so in the fear-based reality that you may or may not be living in. And when a woman says yes to herself and when a woman steps into something like seductress with the, with the faith and to even just the glimmer of a belief that this gets to change your life, right? So what I want to, what I want to give you as we end this is women who sign up for my programs often experience radical shifts right away. And one, and that's for two reasons. One, I energetically infuse the container with that. And two, what I want to encourage you to start doing right here and right now, hopefully with seductress, but with whatever is beginning to just, when you say yes, instilling the belief that this is the best investment I will ever make in myself. Because I think one thing when it comes to coaching and programs, and you've probably done coaching or programs before or therapy, and then there's that part of you that's like, oh, if I do this, that means I'm still broken or like blah, 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 blah. And then there's the fear of like, it's not going to work for me and blah, 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 blah. And I, I would have those stories too, and they've come up and blah, blah, blah. But when I began to say yes to what I wanted and couple it with, and this is the best investment I've ever made in myself. So much began to shift, right? So when we say yes, and then the back of my mind, your mind, you're holding the story that it's not going to work for you. It's going to work for everybody else. Like all of these things. And again, what I want to normalize is the fear is it's normal. The hesitancy, it's normal. But what I really want to encourage you into is to connect to pussy, to ask her if it's a yes or a no. And if it's a no, be in the no, be the empowered no and be like, yeah, this isn't for me. Either it's not the right time or just not the course for me. Great. But if it's a yes, allow yourself to say yes. Okay. So you can go to the magneticwoman.com backslash seductress, sign up, get all the bonuses. You're going to get more homework assignments tomorrow. And then Friday, we have our final training. And I want it to be like a fun, happy hour vibe. Come dressed as your seductress. You don't have to be on camera if you don't want to be. Bring a drink, bring a tea, bring whatever. Um, But get ready to have some fun on Friday. So we're talking all about sex and relationships. Okay, my loves, have a wonderful, wonderful night. I'll see you on Friday.